Thanks for tapping in to another episode of Cosign Conversations, man. This one is a very special episode, man. We got Chicago's very own Christy Lofton in the building. Oh my God. I'm talking about actor, entrepreneur. Used to be an athlete too, man. So yeah, we're gonna get, we gonna get into it. We're gonna get bit. into it. I appreciate you, G. That was a dope introduction, dog. Right, I appreciate you, it. Man. Thank you, man. First and foremost, man, how you doing, bro? Bro, I'm good. We in Dallas, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, first stop, fresh off the plane, come yeah. holler at you. I'm good, man. I'm excited. We got the little situation tonight, so it's going to be dope. The show right. running is going good. We just got that season two renewal. Okay, I saw that. Congratulations. You know, so I don't, you know, for the fans, I don't know if I'm going to be in season two. Oh, you're going to be in season two. But yeah, yeah. The, the show <laughs> got a season yeah. two pickup. Yeah, we're going to speak that into existence. We're going to speak that into existence. Jannar, yeah. Jannar, be, he be tripping sometimes, so I don't know if he's going to make it. He do, man. I saw the last yeah. episode, man. I'm like, oh, man, it's, 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 it's coming together. Then my man put a left move. I'm like, man, why you do that? <laughs> yeah, bro. You know, hey, hey, man, I, I wanted to do it. So you watched last week then. I so, did. So you felt it then. So when they yeah. showed me, when, they, yeah. when, when E died. Yeah. And they kind of showed, like, they showed Tommy down that that was yeah. Jannar. Like, damn, should I pop him right nah, now? I saw that. That was it. That yeah. was that moment. I was like, I should just, yeah, I should it just, go. it should be. Yeah. But then, you know, so, like, Jannar definitely had to make that left turn. For <laughs> I, sure, I, for sure. He I had saw, to spin man. the block. I saw it, man. But before we get deeper into, you know, the, uh, the power of force, man, I want to talk about you, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I did watch the interview since we're in Dallas. We talked about how Dallas was kind of, like, uh, a stepping stone opportunity for when you, you know, ended up meeting 50, right? Yeah. So I kind of want to delve on that and the importance of that night in general. You know what I'm saying? Let you yeah. kind of talk about the importance of that night in general. And then, you know what I'm saying, the love you have for Dallas. Man, dog, I got I got love for Dallas. My dog and one of my longtime friends, brother, business manager, partner, my right. boy, he he lives down here, Trey Austin. Shout out to Trey. Like, he's down here, man. And Desi, shout out to Desi, shout man. To Desi. A real, if you're from yeah. Dallas, all you, you got to do Desi. is say Desi, and yeah. you're going to know what time it is. So, so Desi, man, you know, he was running um, Park Ave. That's, I think that's where we went that night. It was yeah. Park Ave. I saw 50 was in town. I was already in Dallas chilling with Trey. I see 50 in town. I'm, I got my audition for Raising Canaan. It okay. wasn't even no, Force wasn't even a right. thing yet. They probably knew it was coming, but it wasn't happening yet. Right. So I was auditioning for Raising Canaan. I was auditioning for uh, Marvin and Lulu. Okay. So I uh, I had that audition on a Monday. I think we was at Park Friday night. I was flying back to LA to hit that audition Monday. I say, yo, Desi, ain't 50 going to be in the club? He say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, bro, I need a section. Yeah. <laughs> I say, I need a section. Got so, you. Desi, please give me a section tonight. Yeah, make it happen. He was like, all right, I, I got you. I was like, but nah, but look, Desi, I need you to put it right next yeah. to 50. Yeah. I say, I ain't trying to be in his section, but I want to be damn near close enough to touch the nigga if right. I need to. <laughs> right. I was like, put me close, Desi. Like, yeah. look, I ain't going to, I promise you, trust me, Desi, yeah, put me close. Got you. And he was like, I, I, I got you. He's like, I'm, I'm going to trust you, Chris. I got yeah. you. And then I said, one more thing, Desi. He said, damn, one more thing? I said, yeah, one more thing, Desi. Yeah. He like, what's up? I say, uh, y'all got Branson at Park Ave? That's what he was pushing. He said, yeah, we do. I said, yeah. Send all Branson to my table. Okay. But wait till 50 get there because I know he got a cameraman. And yeah. if he got a smart cameraman, you're going to get that free promotion. Real. That's free promo. Right. 50 ain't even have to pop these bottles. Some random nigga over there with Branson, <laughs> nigga. Right. Turn your camera. That's just common sense. Exactly. So to me, I was like, bro, order Branson. Give mm. me three, four bottles of Branson. Wait until 50 get in the club. I don't care if he don't walk in until 2.33 in the morning. I'm just going to sit there with no drinks. Right. <laughs> until 50 get here to see this shit because I don't right. give a damn about the bottles. Right. I smoke. I got you. The hell with this liquor. Mm -hmm. This is clearly for the show. No. This, <laughs> this is, this is yeah. I don't really care. So right. I say, yo, bring it out. He bring it out. I get that little moment where the cameraman pans and I use that to like say, yo, let me go holla at him. And then shout out to my... I got it. We in Dallas. Yeah. Bay Bay. Hollywood Bay okay. Bay. Yeah. That's my guy. So I knew that's what made me feel comfortable enough to walk down there to 50. Because mm. Bay Bay was hosting. Okay. Oh, Bay you going to turn it up too. Bay Bay was hosting. And I said, you know what? Even if 50 security want to drag me up out that section, right. Bay Bay not going to let that happen. Oh, not at all. I say, so this is the time. <laughs> Go down there right now while yeah. he next to Bay Bay and you got a chance. Yeah. So I went down there. I said, what up to Bay Bay? And he was like, yo, 50, that's my boy, my partner, my boy Chris. He be doing the acting and shit, fucking with the movies. You need to holler at him, uh, five. I said, yeah. 50, I'm, yeah, I was on. He was like, yeah, you know, I think I seen you somewhere before. Yeah. Holler at my man's. Holler at my man's Renee. So I get his homie Renee's number. To, uh, come to find out, Renee 
is his business partner and, okay. and like helps over at G Unit, the man over at G Unit. Okay. G Unit Films, not just the record label, G Unit Films and television. So I just kept in contact with Renee. I ended up, obviously, I didn't get Raising Canaan. Right. I auditioned for it. I didn't get it. But I was I would always hit him up. I'm like, yo, I'm auditioning for BMF, auditioning for Raising Canaan. Hey, I just got this audition for Force. He's like, word? Hey, I ain't never tell you that. Joseph Sakura, my best friend. I was like, what? Oh, wow. So, nigga, Tommy been your best friend this whole time? <laughs> now, mind you, I've known Renee at this point for two, three years. Because okay. this, this situation in Dallas at Park Ave happened in, like, 2018. Okay, it's early. Okay. Right? Yeah. Right. So, it's 2020 now. Mm. He's just now telling me that Tommy this is, is his best friend. <laughs> I'm like, yeah? <laughs> he said, yeah. So, that, that audition you sent me, that shit was dope. Yeah. I sent it to him. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I sent it to him. And then he sent it to 50. Mm -hmm. 50 sent it to Courtney. Courtney sent it to the CEO of Stars. Dang. I'm like, what? Somebody should be calling you in an hour. And they called. And then I had like, they gave me notes. They was like, yo, we love what you did. Right. I don't know how your tape ended up on my desk this morning, Chris, but somehow it did. Yeah. I love what you did, but take these notes, retape it. And I did that. I retaped it. They called back like a couple weeks later. Like, yo, we like it. Do a Zoom call with us. This is pandemic. So it wasn't okay. no in the room shit. Right. That, that shit was over with. <laughs> yeah. It was all on the Zoom. So they're like, yo, do a Zoom with us. Hop on the Zoom. 73, I'll never forget, 73 boxes open on the Zoom, G. 73 people on there, Zoom. 73 boxes. Only like six of them got their cameras on. But it's 73 <laughs> boxes. It's crazy. And I'm just in the Zoom, and they're like, yeah, okay, whenever you're ready. To do what? Right. I had to <laughs> act it out. I was okay. like, said I had to do the Zoom. Whenever you're ready, do yeah. the scenes. 73 boxes open. I'm like, shit, all right. <laughs> they call back. Yeah. They say, hey, we want you to uh, do it again, but this time with Joseph Sikor. Okay. We want you to read with Tommy. I'm like, okay, yeah. do it again. <laughs> <laughs> this time with Tommy. I'm like, all right, bet. The same scene? Same. Bro, I, I auditioned in October. Yeah. I auditioned October 2020. I didn't finally get the role to January 2021. Okay. But I my first audition was in October of 2020. And then I did like three, four more after that. Gotcha. And then I finally got it. Because they was going another direction. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I equate Joseph Sikora so much to me getting this role. Like, bro, he went out on the limb for me. Like, he put his neck on the line for me. Like, he told me the story. He, Renee, the guy I met in Dallas, yeah. sent him my audition tape. He told me, he said, bro, I was walking with my wife. Chris, I'll never forget it. That's how <laughs> Joseph said, Chris, I'll never forget it. Yeah. I was walking with my wife from the grocery store. We were leaving Trader Joe's, and I got this tape. <laughs> Renee sends me a text message, and I get this tape, and I'm watching, and I said, babe, holy shit, this is the guy. This is the guy. He says, I'm in the middle of the street in New York City, and I'm watching your audition tape, Chris. That's crazy. And I said, that's the guy. And I never met him. He ain't know me yeah. from Adam, bro. Never met him a day in my life. And he immediately, he said, I immediately then took it upon myself to tell everyone, stop what you're doing. This is the guy. I don't know what y'all was planning yeah. on doing. That's not this my business. Him. But in my opinion, yeah. this is the guy. And it is my show, Right. This is the guy. It's that power of a cosign, man. Yeah, he gave me the, 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 the no pun intended. <laughs> exactly. That was the most powerful cosign I yeah. could have ever got, bro. And he cosigned it without ever meeting me a day in my life, just off a of tape. And like for that, I got Joseph Sakura for life, bro. He nah. changed my life. Man, that's you know? real. That's a powerful story, man. Yeah. And uh, what I've what I've learned from watching your interviews and your stories, man, is the the grit and the grind and the hustle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what I want to talk about is uh even in your story, you talk about how you've auditioned for all of these power series, mm -hmm. and now you finally got it, right? You put everything into that. We talk about going to Park Avenue, being strategic, bringing the bottles out when 50 comes, meeting Renee, keeping that relationship. But when you reach a goal like that, right, like how does it feel, and then what do you look forward to next? Like what do you put your, your energy into next? Yeah, like you said, yeah, I did audition for all the powers, and, and now I look forward to – I look forward to the start because at the end of the day, I feel like this. I tell my girl this all the time. That there's a Drake line for everything. Oh, there is. There really is, though. <laughs> like, is. I, I hate that I have to be that guy, but there yeah. really is a Drake line for everything. Yeah. And the way I feel is I'm the rookie and the vet. Mm. That's how I feel because it's like I'm a rookie 
to add to the world because it's like they finally seeing me at this capacity, which is power. So to a lot of people, they like, who is this? They don't, yeah. they might not have watched ballers. They might not have even put the correlation together that that was me in Snowfall when they was in Arkansas and they was teaching them how to, they, wait, that was yeah. you? They yeah. don't remember hardball. They don't remember this. So to a lot of people, I'm a rookie. Right. And that's great. I'm cool with that okay. because I know that low key, I'm the vet because I've been doing this shit 23 years. Yeah. So it's like I'm the rookie and the vet. So I look forward to that process. It's like the damn near the maturation of, of Chris D. Lofton. You know, it's like, okay, I feel like the ball's in my court. So I look forward to just what's next. Like the other endeavors that I want to take care of. Like I want to direct. I want to write. You know what That's I'm saying? It. Because I've been doing it so long, the acting is just second nature. Yeah. So it's like, all right, cool. Like, yeah, I want to, bro, look. What about this script I wrote? I wrote a I wrote a TV show. I got a TV show written, ready for you, bro. I got a I got a movie that's written. I yeah. wrote it five years ago. Yeah. Like I got, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm ready to direct. I'm taking directing classes. Like my goal is if Jannard is still alive mm -hmm. by season three, one of those episodes in season three need to be directed by me. If Jannard is still alive, I'm a, I'm a push for that. If it, hopefully Jannard's still alive to where I can have some a little bit of like you know yeah relationship a deeper relationship with people to be able to ask that but it's not unheard of a lot of actors you know direct the episodes when they on them shows nah, sure. and that's the route I want to go I want to direct bro because that's 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 what I look forward to I look forward to the journey of of what's next the the possibilities of the things that I used to see when I wanted to be in this position right you know when I would watch power and be like man I bet I bet it's some dude probably writing a movie right now, probably just going to call him and say, bro, I want the dude from Power to play. Right. I want Dre from Power to play this role. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to those moments now. Absolutely. Like, what young director or what young writer is sitting down watching Power like, yo, I think this kid, Jannar, could do this. Yeah, could really, I could see him in this And role. who's in a meeting right now dropping my name that I don't know about? That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to that to see if it's, you know. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, bro. I'm looking forward to that and just to see where this character goes and the journey of this, man, because it still feels surreal because at the end of the day, like you said, bro, I've been a fan. Nah. I've been a fan of power for the whole time, so it still feels surreal. Part of me don't even feel like I'm on the show yet. Yeah. It still ain't nah, really hit, hit, if in yeah. a weird way. You know nah. what I'm saying? Nah, I feel you, man. And, and you work with, you know, some, some powerful people, 50 Cent, right? And then we go to The Rock, you know what I'm saying? And now we can go... Even when you first got your start, I mean, I know you were young, but Keanu Reeves, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, you probably was younger and wasn't really like, I don't know if you were paying attention or not, but like from all those experiences, what have you learned being around people like Keanu Reeves, The Rock, and you know, 50 and your co, you know what I'm saying, your co, uh, co yeah. actors and actresses? Man, bro, I know with Keanu was just one of the nicest people I'd ever met. And maybe I'm biased because I was a kid then, right. but I knew what was up. Like, cause shit, the Matrix was already out. Yeah. When we did Hardball, it was all, it was post Matrix. Yeah. So to me, this was Neo, nigga. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> with I, Neo. Know, I know enough to know that this nigga is Neo. I know that. I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to know nothing about acting. Yeah. I know you're Neo. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, to me, that was dope. And I just, to see what I thought to be Neo at the time, to see him be just so, humanized and normal and, and 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 show humility it just showed me a lot you know what i'm saying and it opened me up to the possibilities of that and then at the time i wasn't no actor i was just a kid from chicago right. so it just opened my mind up to more things and showed me that we ain't gotta just rap or play basketball or football yeah you could be on tv i was like wait a minute what yeah. was like huh you could be on tv like i yeah. went in and you know what i'm saying in 2000 and 99 we weren't thinking yeah. like that yeah. not on the west side of chicago not in 99 we were yeah. like wait a minute bro hold on wait there's a whole nother lane nah, you said sure. tv me yeah. <laughs> like hold on wait a minute they yeah. kind of it messed my head up for a minute so i was like all right let's let's tap into that so i feel like the keanu aspect taught me that that there was way more possibilities to life than just what we were shown in the inner cities nah, and also to just the humility that no matter how big you get mm -hmm. to always humanize yourself. And I feel like with the rock hardest working man in show business, like Dwayne is crazy. Like I just, he taught me that always to always be appreciative of where you are. Cause for somebody at his level yeah. at that magnitude, dog, I was the dude that, 
would be around and just be like, yo, I'm finna find something wrong with this nigga. He can't be, <laughs> can't be that. He lady. can't be this fucking per. Like yeah, y'all, yeah, this yeah. is cap. Like bro, because like I said, like I'm still a fan, bro. Right, so right. like to me, I will be feeling like a lot of the shit that I do is like an out of body experience because mm-hmm. it's still the dude from the West Side of Chicago in here. You feel me? Right. right. So I'll be like, man. What's wrong with you for real? Yeah. Like, nigga, I'm a, is, what, ain't nobody else seeing it. I'm finna catch it though, cause What's they all life? blinded. No, nah, I'm finna yeah. catch it. Yeah. But it wasn't. Mm. And I was like, damn. Like, he really is the dude yeah. that will work a 16 hour day and it'll be 300 people standing outside his trailer and he gonna walk out that trailer and still take all them pictures with all them people. Fucking take your phone out your hand and talk to your mama on FaceTime. Dang. After he just did that. Yeah. Finna go to a helicopter to take him to a jet to go to another set to film a whole nother movie. And he still did that? Yeah. yeah. And sure. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it just messed me up. And then with 50, with five, bro, yeah. same type of situation. I remember I went to a bottle signing with five in Vegas. And it messed my head up because I watched this man hand sign, not no damn stamp or not his assistant or not his partner. Right. I watched him sit there with literal shopping carts, six, seven, eight, nine shopping carts full of all his liquor, Branson and everything, and he was signing them. People just handed it to him. He, yeah. Himself. And then after he did that, he went out there in front of the step and repeat and took pictures with every single person that bought one of them. Dang. Work ethic. And I'm like, I know people who got less than half of what you got, not even half, less than half of what you got, who think they too good to do that. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, he taught me like five is just like nonstop work, yeah. nonstop work and nonstop. Like, like I said, humility at his finest. He found the perfect balance of making himself be this giant, right? but also making himself be the most personable giant you could ever meet, the most approachable giant that you could ever meet. Because you you know you can't be 50, right? but you feel like you can be 50. Nah, that's real. Ain't that real? You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm nah, saying? That is real. And that that's the real. route I want to go. It's, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you, And that's how he is. And he reaches out and touches the people. And, and he dropped some knowledge on me one night. Uh, it was Super Bowl in LA. He was hosting a party. And he was like, yo, yeah, 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 I, I see he was like, I see the people was taking pictures of you, man. He was like, it's only been one episode. That's good. That's good. Mm. So it's only one episode. He said, shit like that don't usually kick in to like <laughs> episode four or five. <laughs> he was like, that's good. That's good. He was like, you know, you just got to keep taking pictures until they don't want to take pictures of you no more, Chris. Mm. And the shit was so simple, yeah. but it made so nah. much sense. He said, you just got to keep doing this shit until they don't want to take pictures of you no more. Yeah. You know what's crazy? The fact that you do that, it goes to a point to where they're always going to want to do it because they're going to remember that. And I remember I saw so and so man. He took a picture with me. Exactly. You know, and not man. only that, but he talked to me, and he was yeah, a real person. Exactly. He didn't like take a picture with me and make it look like he was in a damn assembly line. Just put his arm out, boo. Yeah, nah. Because you know, you it. know, nah. It's like, what's up? You saying what's up to mm-hmm. each individual person? Each experience is different because each person is different, and that's how five is. And it's like for him to be at that level and me to see that. And I'm like, bro, I don't know what your account say, but I know it's more than mine. And you still <laughs> doing that? Still doing it. I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Nah, and, and and he taught me that just that that work ethic, that grind, that humility, that that just staying relatable and staying just staying relevant and relatable. Cause he and he a master marketing genius. Oh, man. Like Jeez. man. Man, 50 different. I met 50 at Park Ave, same time. Yeah. But this was back in his effing days. Oh, in the effing vodka days. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This yeah. effing days, man. Yeah. And I mean, not the same situation, but the same thing, bro. We we end up having a section closer to him. Uh, had some bottles come out, man. You know, I ain't really have nothing for him. Like, I want to be like, yo, man, let's do an interview. But I'm like, that's not the time or the place. Right, you know right, what I'm right. Saying? But uh, I got a picture and I got five minutes with him. You know right. what I'm saying? And he's my favorite artist. So that five minutes to me. Oh, yeah. And everything. Because he could have been like. And then I would, you know, that would have that would have hit me for life. Like, it would have, bro. Man, you know. It would have. It would. And that's the thing. And, I, and when when uh, people, I ain't going to say celebrity. I hate the word yeah. celebrities. Yeah. Like when people are conscious of the fact that this shit, could, it means way, it might mean way more to this person than it yeah. do to me. Like that, to me, like, even if I know, like, I'm going through it, like, I could be walking through it, man, my girl blowing up my phone, getting on my nerves, or my family getting on my nerves, somebody blowing me, but I know, like, this person don't know that. Right. This person don't know my life. All they know is this show that they watch on Sunday, bro. Exactly. They don't even care about that. That ain't their problem, bro. 
Your personal shit ain't got nothing to do with this person who bought that star subscription or who fucking get it for free on the app. It don't matter. Or who <laughs> yeah. get it for free on the, on the illegal. It don't yeah. matter. He sits and watches that shit or they sit and watch that shit. They don't care that your boyfriend or girlfriend getting on your nerves today right. and you don't want to be bothered. They don't, they don't care about that, bro. And I feel like a part of us owes it to him to do that. You know, you, you, you get what you ask for. So yeah. it is what it is. And a lot of shit that come with it is more to it that come with it than just being on TV. It's more that come with it. So you got to take the good with the bad or nah, for sure. the convenient with the inconvenient, you nah, know? Nah, definitely, man. And you winning right now, bro. But let's talk about at times where we went, when shit wasn't all Peters and Cream, right? So like The Rock, Ballers was your second, I guess, run in or time working with him. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, one interview talked about how you were supposed to be on Gridiron Game. It, oh, yeah. Yeah, but it didn't go through. Yeah. So kind of talk to us, man, what you learned like through the losses or the, or the times that you didn't get an opportunity <clears throat> to brought you in now because that could have been a great opportunity. But what did you learn from not getting a role like that or, you know, not getting roles in general that made you who you are today? Man, the gridiron gang thing, man, <clears throat> I say the biggest thing I learned from that was that timing is everything. Like you, you it's just time and that everybody gets their shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And once again, it's a Drake line for everything. Yeah. He said, what he say? We'll, uh, we'll see who's still running it a decade from decade, now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's like, that's what it taught me. It taught me that that instant gratification ain't always the best thing. And fast, fragile, slow, solid. It taught me to just like take your time, bro. Relax. Like, I would have, I would have, I would have messed it up. If I'd have got gridiron gang, knowing Chris, yeah. I was 17. I would have, Chris would have fucked that off, bro. <laughs> Chris, the 17 year old Chris, I'd have, yeah. God gave it to me when I was supposed to have it, bro. It would have been yeah. gone. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'd have been here asking you for money for this interview, my nigga. If this was, if I'd have, <laughs> I'd have been like, I'd have been like, bro, can y'all, can they, can they pay us for this trade? Can they get at least something? Can buy niggas some wings or something? If I, <laughs> but. No, that's real. That's real. But for reals, but so I think it just all, it just taught me timing, but that, that situation was crazy because I'd actually gotten the role yeah. in Gridiron Gang, but. They had uh they wanted me to drop out of school, take the GED test so they can work me like an adult. Right. So if I pass the GED, technically I'm not in school no more because you know you can only work somebody who's mm. in school a certain amount of hours. Child labor laws. Right. So they was like, look, you a senior anyway, my boy. Uh, yeah. Take the test. Take that GED test. Now you an adult. I can work your ass sixteen yeah. hours yeah. if I want to. I'm cool. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Cool. My mm. mama was like, yeah, no, nah, nah. that's not how that's <laughs> going down, son. Yeah. I was like, huh? Are you kidding me right now? She said, yeah, no, I ain't, I ain't doing it. How long you hold that against her? Bro, for a long time. <laughs> All right, uh, a solid three, four months. Yeah. Solid three, four months I held it against the G. And, um, but I emancipated myself after that. I emancipated myself. Yeah, I, I, I emancipated myself after that, but not on no like Macaulay Culkin. Fuck you, mom. Shit. Right. It was nothing like that. It was yeah. nothing like that. I didn't do it for that reason. Yeah. I emancipated myself because like right after the Green Iron Gang situation happened, my uh my mom was like, yo, she walked in the house one day. I was like, yo, we moving to Georgia. I was like, okay. we? Atlanta. Who is we? Uh, we was in Chicago at the time. Who is we moving to Georgia? Yeah. Not Atlanta. Yeah. Georgia. I was like, yeah, nah. It's going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a no for me. Yeah. And then- because of what happened with the Gridiron Gang situation, because I was under 18, I, I needed a parent or guardian to sign that. So I couldn't legally make my own decision to sign it myself. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Y'all moving to Georgia, right? I'm staying in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I want to act. I, I was at that time, it was still sports. I had scholarships on the table for football and baseball. I'm like, I'm not leaving my senior year. So, all right, bye. But hey, before you go, sign this. Yeah. In case I end up booking another role while you in Georgia, I can make that decision as an adult like, if I want to do it or not. So I don't have to wait. So this don't happen twice. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And my birthday was within like eight months anyway. So the emancipation didn't right. really. And I didn't end up booking nothing in between that time. But I was just preparing myself in case gotcha. I did, you know. And and that was it, man. So I think that the losses taught me more than the wins. I learned more from the losses, bro. Like I, from every role I didn't get, for every role that I thought I was going to get for every time they fly you from wherever you live to LA to meet everybody and talk to the writers and have a meeting and take a lunch and have a dinner and all of that. And you still don't get it. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like at first they used to like mess my head up when yeah. I was young. I, you 22, 23. 
Nah. And and they flying you from Chicago to LA first class and it's Paramount Pictures doing oh, it, yeah. paying for it. Imagine if they had Instagram back then. You know what I'm Right. <laughs> We'd be lit. Bro, I did, they didn't have none of that, yeah. bro. I'm 18, 17, 19, Paramount flying me from Chicago yeah. to da, 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 car service before Ubers, black mm. trucks before there was would black you, trucks. Holding your name or <clears throat> Holding the Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like all of that. And and still don't get the role. So like the 21, 22 year old Chris, that shit used to hurt. Yeah. But like the 33 year old Chris, that's the game. Yeah. And that just is what it is, but now I don't I don't get as attached to it. But and that's when I felt like I had to get power. Because I I I'd, I'd uh over the course of doing this for so many years, I had just become disattached to all of the shit that I auditioned to. Like I'm the dude, I walk out the audition the sides or the, the little script that they give us. Yeah. I throw that shit in the garbage before I leave. I don't take none of that. It don't go in the car. Yeah. It don't come in my house. It's over with. If I ever need to see them again, yeah. it's going to be because I either booked it or they emailing me because they want to see me do it again. I don't need it no more in my right. area, vicinity, because I, I made a conscious decision a long time ago when I realized when I separated the business from the personal side of this shit, I feel like any successful person in not even just acting, entertainment, you got to separate the two. There's yeah. Chris D. Lofton, the actor, and there's Chris D. Lofton, the person. Right, right, right. And sometimes Chris Lofton, the person, going to need me more than Chris D. Lofton, the actor. And in times when I was still on the grind, like my agents would tell me, bro, I've never heard an actor put it that way to me before. Like I would straight up tell my agents, they would be like, Chris, what's going on with that audition? You're, you were supposed to go to the audition. I'm like, yeah, I ain't going to make it. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if y'all don't want to represent me no more, I understand. I get it. I don't, I don't want to waste nobody's time here. Right. I said, I understand y'all are doing me a favor, and I appreciate everything that y'all do for me. But I went to two auditions this week. I didn't get them. And I chose to go to those auditions instead of eat. Mm. Today, I choose to eat. Right. Fuck that audition. That's real. Chris Lofton, the person, needs me more today. And you got to separate the two. And they would be like, huh? And I'd be like, yeah, sorry, I ain't going. And it's not even some shit that I think I'm going to get. I'm not playing the game today. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, like the person needs me more. Like, so right. relax. And if you don't understand that, then I'm not the client for you. And that's fine, too. And I respect yeah. it. Yeah. Either way, you, you t so you tell me how you want to. And I, I straight up said that to my agents and managers when I was in L.A., bro. Because I was, I flew to L.A. with a one-way ticket, $300 in a backpack. Yeah. Quit my job. Five for unemployment. They turned my unemployment off two months, two weeks of Dang. me being in L.A. Because I was supposed to appear in Chicago for some mandatory meeting to verify that I'm unemployed, yeah. but I had already moved to L.A. So you missed it. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not about to fly back to Chicago just to get no damn $300 a week unemployment, nigga. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So I said, all right. So I'm just here now. And that's what happened. So it was like, bro, I'm not. I, it's been many a days I chose that audition over something to eat or over my habits yeah. or over just like, you know, luxuries. Like, bro, I was in L.A. a solid six months before I even had a bed. Staying with people. I was just staying with people. I slept on my one of the dudes who was in Harbaugh with me. He played Kofi. Okay. My, yeah. my boy Mike. Shout out to Michael Perkins. Yeah. He had a crib in LA. He was like, bro, you can stay with me. But he already had two roommates. It was a it was a two-bedroom in the valley in a town called Reseda in the uh, okay, yeah, like suburbs yeah. of the valley. It was in Reseda in the valley. Two-bedroom. So I came and made us four. Four of us in the two-bedroom. Right? One nigga was already on the couch. So I couldn't even get the couch. I was sleeping in that nigga's room on a bean bag for the first like four months yeah. well, of me being in LA. Waking up every morning, hopping on the bus and train, standing on Hollywood Boulevard selling hoverboards when them first came out. Mm, yeah. I was selling hoverboards and, and all the tourists walking down the Walk of Fame with their kids and shit. I'd be like, yo, $5, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a lesson on how to ride the hoverboard and drive them, let them ride it around Hollywood Boulevard. Give me $5. Yeah. And I would catch people getting on the train. Because one of my other roommates that I was living with, he used to work for Apple. Apple gave him like little credit cards to get okay. to work, like public transportation cards. Crazy. He gave it to me. He was like, bro, you out here. I got a car. I don't even need this. They Apple 
uploads like 150, 200 a month on this car for me to be able to get to work if yeah. I need to use the bus or train. So you can have it. I'm like, nigga, bet, love, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So I would go stand in front of the train thing, catch people about to put a 50 or a 20 inside the machine to get one of them damn train cars. And I'd yeah. be like, whoa, 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 what you doing? <laughs> what you doing? You, you finna get $50 worth of train? I'm like, nigga, give me $25. I'll put 50 on that right now. Give me 25 yeah. in cash though. Yeah. So that could take care of my habits. Like, nigga, I still want to buy weed. I smoke weed, all type of shit. I got, I want to eat today, all type of shit like yeah, bro yeah. I need the cash Enough, so yeah. bro I would take breaks from being up there selling the hoverboards and go downstairs to the subway tunnel and, and try to flip the yeah. when the when the hoverboards was on bullshit then I go right back upstairs to the hoverboards yeah. I did that for like five six months yeah. every day worked at the gym 24 hour fitness in LA I worked at a hotel right by the airport I was in there mixing waffle batter my nigga before yeah. I booked ballers right before I booked ballers I was in there making the continental breakfasts with niggas <laughs> If you were staying at the hotel and, we, and you was getting eggs, nigga, yeah. I probably made them. You know? It was some good ass eggs, wasn't nah, it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I did that. Like, so, like, bro, you just gotta do what you gotta do, G. Yeah. Now that's real, man, because you know we live in a time where people feel like they too good to do anything. They too good to work a job or to yeah. go do lift in between, in between, you know, gigs or you know, dreams. Yeah. Like, that's like the artist mentality. Like, bro, rappers feel like they shouldn't work. I feel you. I, I, I feel like. I feel like this, G. I feel like nobody ever in the world will truly understand. Like, see, people think that they too good to work. And, okay, a part of me, I can understand how some people can feel that. I don't think nobody's too good yeah. to do anything. But I can see why somebody will feel like they don't want to work. But I feel that nobody will ever understand but another actor mm -hmm. what it's like for somebody to recognize you from TV mm -hmm. and be working that job. It's one thing to you to just think like, oh, I'm... I'm Chris. Yeah. And that's cool. But for somebody to really be able to pinpoint, no, you the nigga from Meet the Browns. Yeah. And you busting my table. How's that feel? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? Nobody gets that feeling. And then to still swallow that and know that it's going to happen yeah. and go do it anyway, my nigga. Yeah. Sheesh. Nah. Like, that's some shit to swallow. I'd be like, bro, I know a nigga's going to recognize me from Meet the Browns in here. Yeah. I know a nigga gonna probably recognize me from hardball in here. Fuck. Fuck. Still gotta do it. Still gotta do it though. Nah, and I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, still gotta do it that's, though. That's, that's, and it just is what it is, bro. Cause I just knew that one day, bro. Yeah. I ain't gonna have to. What was that um, turning point? Was that was it ballers or was it before that? Ballers, I ain't worked since I booked ballers. But sometimes it wasn't because I didn't have to. It was because I said, yeah, nah, nah, it's over with. I remember I called my mama and I said, mama, I don't care what happened. I'm never working another job again. I said, I swallowed that shit during the Meet the Brown stages yeah. and then this stage and that stage. Not post ballers. I said, <laughs> ballers was one of them ones. I said, mama, I can't be seen doing that shit yeah, no more. Nah, I said, yeah, I said, I said you just got to understand. Don't think I'm a piece of shit because <laughs> I'm just sitting here doing nothing. But yeah. I just can't no more, ma. And I was like, yeah. ballers was the point where I said it's over. And it wasn't because they was paying me enough. Right. It was because I just said I ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? Because the average person don't know the difference between a co-star, guest star, and series regular. That's actor yeah, shit. That's yeah. actor terminology. Let's talk about the people do like numbers. You ain't got to say your salary. Right. Let's nah, just yeah. say in general, like like um somebody getting a role. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a reoccurring role. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? On on the show, uh, give us a a range that way. You know what I'm saying? Well, man, I, hey, first season of Baller, season three. Okay. I came in Baller season three. Mm -hmm. I was. Season three, four, and five, I was only a recurring guest star. I, they okay. never made me a series regular, you know. Oh, okay. They never did that. I was so season three when I came in, my very first season, bro, I was only making four thousand an episode. Okay. And this was before I was smart enough to know better about getting an LLC or S Corp and incorporating myself. So nigga, this is four thousand. You can tax on that thing. And then I still got an agent and a manager who get 10% of the gross, not the net. So mm. they get 10% of the foe, not the actual probably sixteen forty nine that it's going to be. Mm. They get the 10% of the foe. Like so everybody. really, I was basically doing that whole first season, nigga, for probably, what, 1300 Ooh, an episode. Damn. But you on TV, though. You on yeah. HBO. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... You, you playing the game, bro. And then, you know, they like the next season come. They give you a little bit more. They give you a little bit more. But they never made me a series regular. But So where'd you end up? Where'd you end at on Ballers? On Ballers, I ended at, they, by the end of season five, they had bumped me to 7,500 an episode. Okay. 
And, and when did you uh when did you end up following LLC and S Corp? Yeah, by that time, hell yeah. <laughs> by season five, season oh yeah. Five, by okay. season five, I was I was incorporated, boy. Gotcha. I had a business, I had a <laughs> I had a yeah. production company. This yeah. check, I don't know who Chris Lofton is. That yeah. check is going to 630 Entertainment. You know what's crazy? I, I recently interviewed uh Damn, it's fucked up that I care. Taja, Taja V. Simpson. Mm -hmm. She played, you know, you know. Oh, yeah, oh, she on the Oval. Yeah, she on the Oval. That's my guilty pleasure <laughs> show. Now, was, exactly. see, I knew exactly yeah. when you said her name. I was I like, bro, the Oval. hundred percent. Yeah, and she broke that down because I mentioned like the the thing I saw on uh on Instagram about Taraji P. Hansen mm -hmm. talking about, yeah, you may get a quarter or three hundred thousand for whatever. But once you start breaking it down, she's like, I walked away with like 60,000, 40,000. Yeah. And I it was could like, be, dang. It could be like that, especially if you if you ain't got them companies. Yeah. If you ain't got them the, the S Corps or the LLCs, bro, if you getting if you getting a nice check and they just paying you, bro, uh, uh, if you getting paid, say you getting paid 25,000 an episode, mm -hmm. sound great as hell on paper. Right. 25,000 an episode without a company is really Thirteen five an episode, and now take away five thousand if you got an agent and a manager. So that's because they getting twenty five hundred a piece. So that's five thousand out your thirteen. Dang, say you under fifty percent of the. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then then that's really what you get. And then if you live in L. A. Oh, yeah. Shit, I pay thirty three hundred for a one bedroom. Mm. Yeah, you got it. So now what you got? <laughs> Sixteen hundred dollars left, yeah. and you just but you just made twenty five thousand. Yeah. Technically, and still got to pay taxes on the twenty five thousand, but really you only got. Yeah, dang, that's crazy. Yeah, crazy. bro, the shit, the shit get deep. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So the being a series regular versus not is is a is a big difference. But that's why I feel like I just had to find a way. I, I say this, and I said it in another interview, but I say it a lot. You got to cast the shadow of an elephant, even if you're an ant, and that's what I did with ballers. You couldn't tell nobody that I was only getting four thousand dollars an episode. Right. I looked like I was one of the stars of the yes, show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you couldn't tell nobody no difference, and yeah. I was like, you know what? Instead of being mad at that, instead of being salty that somebody that might not have as many lines as me is making fifty thousand dollars, but I'm only making five. Instead of being mad about that, mm -hmm. close the gap a little bit. Mm -hmm. Close the gap. Don't be salty. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. Don't be salty. Okay. I'm finna make my character look bigger than his though. Yeah. But he make 50,000, but the world's gonna probably think I make more than him. I'm finna make the world think I make yeah. more money than you. That's real. And that's how I play ballers. Mm -hmm. Like nigga, I was out there throwing first pitches at, at baseball stadiums, mm -hmm. all type of shit, hosting parties at clubs as the nigga that was only getting. Yeah. So you made up for it on the back end. You, <laughs> I made it look bigger. I'm throwing yeah. first pitches at games, bro. I'm doing all type of shit. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, like being the um the honorary at parades and shit. Like mm -hmm. doing like leading per like bro. Yeah. I'm real life was doing that. So I'm like, yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna use the relationships to make the job look bigger than what it is. Because people fuck with Chris. Right. That's real. I don't care if they don't watch ballers. They ain't even got to. Cool. Yeah. I ain't even watch it sometimes. Cool. I get it. <laughs> I, I did. did. I did. I'm a huge fan of ball. I was yeah. a huge fan too, but sometimes you don't watch it. Yeah. I get it. Oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like I get that, bro. I want people to like Chris. I don't yeah. like forget yeah. Kasanti, forget Jannard. Yeah. That's great. Those are the platforms. But if people don't like Chris, then none of that's gonna matter. And yeah. that's what a lot of people, that's what the disconnect is with a lot of actors. They think that the role is gonna be become bigger than them. And sometimes you get lucky and it does. If you get one of the Marvel joints, people don't care if you're an asshole. Yeah. You just, nigga, you Iron Man. Yeah. I don't care. If, <laughs> I don't give a shit if you're an asshole. Nigga, <laughs> nigga that's Batman. You yeah. can be an asshole. <laughs> like, you know? Batman, but yeah. if you got a, a, another type of role, don't yeah. nobody care if you Jannar from Power if when they met you, you're yeah. a piece of shit. Who nah, cares? Nah, that's true. <laughs> you, know, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's why I want to give you a flower, bro, because, you know, from the media perspective, bro, like, I know y'all do a lot of these. You know what I'm saying? A lot of interviews. Some are big, some are small, some are good content. Some you just doing because you got to do it, right? But from every interview I watched, you know what I'm saying, uh, over the time, you always gave 100%, bro. You didn't half-ass anybody. You didn't act like you didn't want to be there. Yeah. You gave them gems. It wasn't yes or no responses. Like, you were telling stories. And I commend you on that because some people, not even just actors, you got athletes, celebrities, artists, they just, you know, they give you the bare minimum. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. I feel like people respect you a lot more because you're personable, man. You you came in here, greeted everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that lasts a long time. And that's what I'm saying, bro. Yeah. That's what I ain't going to, I'm not going to step away from what's got me here yeah. just because I think 
I'm here now. Now I don't need nobody. Nah, this one I need people the most. Nah. You know what I'm saying? This one I need people the most. This ain't when I'm supposed to push people away. Nah, I got you, bro. Feel me? Yeah, I ain't gonna hold you too much long, but I got a couple more questions for you. Yeah, we're good. So for uh ballers and, and power force, bro, it's two, it's two different audiences, but they're two really great shows. You know what I'm saying? How'd your life change after both of them? Ballers changed because I had like I started finding myself having way more like NFL homies. Like, cause all the like all the NFL niggas would hit me like, yeah. bro, yeah. they got you playing me on the show. <laughs> yeah. You playing me. Yeah. Next time you in Dallas, let me know. I, yeah. I'll leave you tickets for the game. Next time you in Arizona, let me know. I'll leave you tickets. So, but like, I just started realizing, like, damn, like uh, I was at a lot of NFL games. I was uh, at a lot of training facilities. I was at uh, a lot of practices. Like, uh, like after ballers, it was like, bro, like a lot of people thought I was really in the NFL. Yeah, thought <laughs> like no, in real life. Man. And then you know. The white people, a lot of times, they look at me every time I get in an elevator. It's always, "What team do you play for?" <laughs> Especially if I ain't got a hoodie on and they can see a nigga muscles. <laughs> well, so, what team do you play for? Do you guys have a game today? Or yeah. no, I'm like, lady, it no, I'm know. an actor, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Watch your mouth. <laughs> nah. you, watch, you know nah, what I'm saying? And yeah, you six two, so shit. yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. So I feel like ball has changed like that. Everybody thought I was an athlete, and I had way more ath- athlete friends, more yeah. NFL homies, and more went to way more NFL games. Yeah. And it just changed drastically because, like, I was living in LA. I was getting invited to events now. Like, I'm walking red carpets. Like, it, it's in LA, it's different. It's like you can go to parties, but like now, is it was like after Ballers, it was like, oh no, 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 no. That's that, that's my guy from Ballers. Yeah. Or like it was not just you going to a party. It's oh yeah, Chris. You know, Jamie. Jamie got the party at his house tonight. I was like, Jamie, Jamie Fox. Yeah. You're not, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he told he says he wants you to come, huh? Hey, want meet her? He what? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's, he he told me to bring you. Uh, okay, like it, it was uh, shit like that. You're not going to Chris Brown's party tonight? Like that's what like that's uh, what ballers did. That it was like all of that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And then, but power just was like power hit different. Uh, power made it now. It's like I'm in CVS getting some tissue or something. Normal nigga shit. Yeah. You know, like, man, get some tissue to wipe my ass. Like a normal nigga, nothing, yeah. nothing to see here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And people, you ain't shit for what you did to your brother. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> your ass really ugly. I should have slapped the shit out of you. It's like, what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's what power did. <laughs> power, power made it where I can't even go buy no tissue yeah. without a nigga telling me I ain't shit. No. But I love it. Yeah, you know they, what I'm saying? Yeah, they, <laughs> they really think you know. <laughs> they really think you know what I'm telling you, bro. Like I'm just yeah. randomly walking down the street, just chilling, minding my business. You better stop playing with your brother. <laughs> just keep walking. Like, you know. <laughs> that's what that's what power did. Yeah. Power did that, man. It just, it just like really uh, solidified it and I feel like it just made people pay attention more and take it more serious. Because like it's one of them things like what I say with rappers too. Yeah. It's kind of like a thing that an artist kind of hates to hear but loves to hear at the same time. It's like a gift and a curse. If you are a rapper and somebody somebody who you say you call him your homie or your yeah. he maybe not a friend but he your homie. Yeah. He should know that you cold by yeah. now. You done put out three, four mixtapes. Yeah. He should know that you cold, right? right? Yeah. But then you drop this one mixtape and he like, damn, Cosine, you could, you could, you could actually rap. Yeah. <laughs> and you like, wait, nigga, as opposed to what? What did you think I was doing this whole time? Yeah, the whole time, a bit rapping. What did you think I was doing? Yeah. So like, the the last mixtapes wasn't rapping. It's, yeah. that's what power has done, though. It's making people pay attention. So a lot of people was like, damn, Chris, you can act, huh? <laughs> Go figure. Nah, for real. Huh. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I can, huh? Yeah. You know what? Thank you, bro. I don't even get mad at it no more. I be like, man, thank you. Be like, bro, you can actually act. Like, nigga, what did y'all think I was doing? Like, the the other shit I did my whole career, worked my ass off of, that meant nothing? Power, though. Like, now, now I can act. And it's just, that's what power did. You know who got it worse than you, though? Tariq. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh no, he got. I be hollering at Mike all the time. Like, no, nah, they be on his head. Yeah. They be on his head, bro. They bro. be on his head. But no, nah, yeah. look, look, look. Hold on, I gotta play something for you on air. My girl gonna probably get mad, but I don't care. This is hilarious. This yeah. is what Power did. This okay. is what Power did. You wanna know what Power did? Hold yeah, on, nah, hold on. Sure. Listen. Yo, you dead ass left my titties 
on red, like on red, like for real. Like, you lucky I can't snatch that shit out your motherfucking memory, just like how T.I. <laughs> snatched that necklace off of Nunu and that <laughs> ATL. Yeah, you lucky I can't s- snatch that bitch up. I'm off it, though. I hope you enjoy your day. <laughs> That's what power did. <laughs> How they looked up. <laughs> what? My that was my sentiments exactly, bro. My sentiments exactly. Man. My sentiments exactly. Bro. I said, wait. <laughs> what? I just, bro, I must have laughed at that shit for about wow. an hour long. Yeah. That's, that's what that's what power did. That's crazy. Power did that. That's <laughs> <laughs> if you if you want to know that wasn't happening on ball that, that wasn't happening that didn't happen on snowfall power did that damn power, hey, power did that that that's the effect of power people yeah. take that shit very seriously out here <laughs> rumble about that shit for days dog crazy man. damn <laughs> crazy Dang. All right. So like the whole the whole power. Do y'all really feel like the whole power, what do they call the universe? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Have you had a chance to interact with, you know, people from different series shows? Yeah, um, man. We get out like uh Woody who played Kane on Ghost. That's my dog. Mm-hmm. But he's been my dog since before we both booked power. Okay. Like when we was still in LA, when he was just got the Bobby Brown role okay. and I was just on ballers, Woody was my homie already. Gotcha. And I remember having the conversations when he was auditioning for power I'm like bro nah if you get that I'm like ain't nobody gonna even be thinking about the Bobby Brown shit no more cause he was so worried about like being stuck at Bobby yeah. bro they gonna think I'm Bobby all the time I remember yeah. he came to the crib and was like bro they gonna think I'm like Woody relax I was yeah. like nigga and even if they do think you're Bobby Brown that's pretty damn good yeah. that was a good thing to be yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like but you gonna get something else that's gonna make people forget mm. about Bobby Brown and lo and behold came to harder. You know what I'm saying? And then for me to end up being in the universe with him, crazy. And then Michael Rainey too, like I've always been a fan of the show. So for me, I had to tell him one day, he he had sent me a DM. He was like, yo, nah, I can't lie. Fuck with your character. OD, Janard's crazy. Janard's hard. I'm like, what? I was like, bro, I sent him a message back. I was like, yo, man, you got to relax, bro. I was like, nigga, you still Tariq St. Patrick to me, nigga. I was like, I ain't been in this shit that long, Michael. I was like, I ain't been in it. You got to relax. I was like, bro, you can't be saying you like, you like, relax. But he's cool, bro. We, I linked with Mike a few times. We, that's my boy, man. We, we linked up in New York and now every time he hosts in a party somewhere, I end up knowing the promoter. Yeah. So like every time he in a, in a city, somebody end up FaceTiming me like, yo, got your boy in here. I'm yeah. like, yo, take care of him, bro. Yeah, like, nah. So like now it's like that. But And he he hit me sometimes and show love, man. And I respect him. I respect the grind. So it's just crazy to be a part of the universe, bro. And I, I link up with everybody. Joseph Sikor is my dog. Yeah. yeah, I still ain't really met that many other people. But for the most part, we, we tapped in with them two for sure. Nah, that's real, man. And it kind of tied things all together, bro. Like I said, you everything I've seen, bro, you've been a hustler, bro. You've been the grind, the grit, and really perseverance. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. a lot of times, even as an entrepreneur, like we go through shit, man, hard times, and it's mm-hmm. like, man, should we still be doing this? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But you just keep going. So I don't even want to say leave with a piece of advice for actors or entertainers, because uh, it really applies to everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? So what would you tell niggas like us who, who don't want to give up that dream like, what should we be doing, like, to keep going or, you know, motivation, anything? Bro, um, I say, like you said, the perseverance, resilience, G. Like, you just got to be resilient. No don't mean no. It just might mean not right now. Right. And honestly, the name of the game is, this shit is really, bro, it's really just the last man standing. Mm. It ain't nothing else. It's really because everybody, bro, there's enough money and there's enough opportunities for everybody to get their turn. Yeah. Where people fuck up and where people lose is everybody ain't willing to wait the time that it may take for their turn to happen because everybody journey different. Right. So like some, that's why some niggas could be doing some shit. They could start tomorrow and get on in six months, yeah. a year. That was their journey. Yeah. Can you handle the mental shit that's going to come with the nigga? It might take you 15 years. Mm. You going to get it though. Take you you're going like bro you're going to get it yeah but it might take you 13 might take you 22 yeah. might take you eight some people can't deal with that part right if you can just like find a way to compartmentalize the two and look at that like a a blessing because I looked at it like because I come from like the street so I looked at it like 
If somebody told you that you could live the rest of your life comfortably and not just your life, change your life and the people around you's life, yeah. in 10 years, would you not take that? Nah, I would. Or would you be like, I can give you $100,000 today, though. Or if you wait 10 years, you don't get nothing now, but I'll change your life, your family's life, and everybody if you get in 15 years, I promise. Yeah. Make it sound like a deal to me, nigga. That's that. Like that sounds. That you. Can, that sound like a deal. I can wait it out. I'm yeah, cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like some people are not cool with that though, and a lot of people can't mentally take that. So to me, I say get your mental right. Mental health is the key, bro. Mental health is the key. Get your mental right to withstand that shit because it's going to happen. And then have your mental right for when it does happen to be able to control it, maintain it, and keep it up. And for men, I want to say this. I feel like this. This is just my truth. My idea and ideology, I don't know if it's true for any other man, but I I feel like any entrepreneurial man, whether you're in entertainment, whatever, you're granted three women, possibility, three women in your life, right? In a perfect world, you you get three. Okay. One who's going to be with you on the bottom, mm. one who's going to be with you on that rise while you're trying to get to the top, that climb. Okay. And then you got one who's going to be with you when you get to the top. The average woman cannot be all three. That's just average, though. There's a lot of above average women. Right. There's a lot of above average women, but the average woman cannot be all three. <clears throat> Most women can be one to two of those things. It takes an exceptional woman to be all three. all three, but most women can be one to two of those things. You just got to figure out which woman is which and don't put them in the wrong spot. Don't get confused and think that the woman that was supposed to be with you on the bottom is the same one that was supposed to be with you on the top because it might not be the same one. Maybe the one on the climb is supposed to be the one with you on the climb and to the top, but she can't be with you at the bottom. Some women can't handle the bottom. You know, they say men can't go back backwards sexually and women can't go backwards in lifestyle. If you start off do, living like this with the woman, you got to keep that shit up. At all times. If, yeah. if you start off pulling on my ears, you can't just stop pulling my, my ears, ears, baby. You can't <laughs> yeah. stop. Yeah. You got to do that now. So I feel like such is true with that. There's some, you, you don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Every, you just got to learn the partner in your life, bro, and, and, and know where they're supposed to be and don't misjudge it. Don't treat the woman who's supposed to be with you on the top like she was the woman that's supposed to be with you on the bottom. You might have to walk away from her because you know that she the woman that's supposed to be with you when you're at the top. But she can't handle the bottom. Every woman can't. Every woman can't. You know what I'm saying? And that's just that's that's what I say, bro. Keep the mental health right and and don't don't let the women get you, bro. Been there. Yeah. Been there. Don't let the women get you, bro, cause they out here. And I wanna put you on the spot before we get out. Where, where would you say yours is at right now? She Yeah, my 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 woman, she was with me in the rise and she with me at the top. And I believe she the one that could ride with me at the top. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't think I'd still be in a relationship yeah. right now if I didn't think she was that woman. So I think that she definitely can be that woman at the top. That's what's up, man. Yeah, because, like, yeah. I, the, my ex, not so much. <laughs> my ex, not so much. She, no, that's what's up, man. I appreciate your time, no, bro, bro, man. Guys. This is a great conversation. No, man, y'all make sure y'all keep up my guy, Chris D. Lofton, on yes, Instagram, sir. all socials. Make sure y'all check out Power Force. I'm going to manifest that he is going to be in season two and three and four because he's going all the way. Hey, man, you know let's do it. And just, uh, you know, just ease up on your brother, man. He just got out, man. I got you, man. I'm going <laughs> to do my best. He just G. got out, man. A little bit. You know what I'm saying? saying? Number two ain't bad. The number two guy on Facebook is still a millionaire. Probably billionaire. A billionaire. You right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you I'm know. I'm cool. I'm cool with being number two. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a co sign CBI situation over here, yes, man. Sir. <laughs> yeah. Y'all boys take it easy. I'll see y'all next time. All right, now don't make us initiate your ass, co sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs>